welcome in this session of your course pedagogy of science i am dr gaurav singh your course instructor and today we are going to talk about a very interesting topic that is nurturing aesthetic sense in science generally when we talk about aesthetic sense it is a common myth that science has nothing like aesthetics science is very objective very rational doesn't talk about beauty and all other issues but actually it is not if you see the nature around you how flower blooms how sun rises and sets how bacteria moves you will find a static sense everywhere so in this video i am basically trying to tell you little bit about aesthetic sense in science as well as aesthetic sense of our scientists dear friends when we are talking about aesthetic sense we can start with a famous quote of very famous and known educationist of india jiddu krishnamurthy sirani in his paper basically quoted krishnamurthy and i am quoting the same in the silence of deep night and in the quiet still morning when the sun is touching the hills there is a great mystery it is there in all living things if you sit quietly under a tree you would feel the ancient earth with its incomprehensible mystery on a still night when the stars are clear and close you would be aware of expanding space and the mysterious order of all things so if you read this jiddu krishnamurthy's quote you can feel what kind of aesthetic sense he has he was looking with aesthetics towards the morning and evening towards the trees and the stars so the science is dear friends but let us ask few questions before going in the details of aesthetic sense and science that why are we talking about aesthetic sense what has happened which has compelled us to talk about aesthetic sense in science have you ever realized what kind of science we are teaching nowadays you will not be surprised and you may agree with me that most of the teaching of science has become too mechanical we are giving a lot of emphasis on scientific method science is full of facts figure theories principles and there is a rush for examination centered history of science most of the time we are focusing who discovered what what was the principle when it was found who first bring changes in the law so many times we don't talk much about science we talk about history in science we hardly give any opportunity or you hardly find any place for imagination or natural curiosity or feeling but my question is is it true nature of science i am going to discuss with you few many important quotes and few many important writings of very famous scientists which will help you in understanding that science is not like this science is very beautiful science is very musical science is very lucid science is full of aesthetics here are very few famous scientific writings there is a famous book of judith wessler edited book on aesthetics and science there is a very famous book by arthur korenberg for the love of enzymes the odyssey of a biochemist there is a very famous Nobel laureate Rolf Hoffman wrote a paper Molecular Beauty and our own Indian 
Subramaniam Chandrasekhar, who talk about aesthetics and science a lot, has written a book, Truth and Beauty, Aesthetics and Motivation in Science. There is a very famous edited book of Milena Ivanova and Stephen French on the aesthetics of science, beauty, imagination, and understanding. And this list is never ending. You will find a lot of scientists who are talking about aesthetics, beauty, all these things in science. Let me take a quote from a famous book of S. Chandrasekhar, where he has written that beauty is relevant to the process of science. Beauty is a guide, a value that scientists use in their work. So Subramaniam Chandra in his book Truth and Beauty in 1987 put this quote and this quote reflects that how aesthetic sense he has and not only he, if you read the autobiographies, the discoveries, the incidents happened with many famous scientists, you will know that they all are enjoying science, they are finding beauty, they are finding love, they are finding some kind of aesthetic sense in science. But what aesthetics means? Let us also discuss about it. The term aesthetic comes from a Greek term aesthesis, which means sense perception or sensory cognition. Senses are gateways of knowledge. So whatever our sense perceived is aesthetic sense. This definition was given by Carroll in 1999. In another definition by Green in 2001, he is saying that aesthetics is a branch of philosophy that deals with perception, sensation, imagination, and how they relate to knowing, understanding, and feeling about world. Can you try to correlate the definition of Carroll or Greeny with the nature of science? Are we not using imagination while exploring the science? Whether scientists never imagine anything? Whether we not trying to develop the process of skills like observation by using the senses of the children? Yes, we are. Is there no place for perception in science? Yes, perception has. So whenever science tries to know something, to understand something, to feel something, to explore something, it is the perception, sensation, and imagination, which also play a very important role with all other scientific methods. So we can say the science is full of aesthetics. Let us explore further that how science is aesthetic in nature. The scientist doesn't study nature because it is useful. He studies it because he delights in it. And he delights in it because it is beautiful. If nature were not beautiful, it would not be worth knowing. And if nature were not worth knowing, life would not be worth living. Henry Poincare talks about aesthetics and science with these words means scientists enjoy the nature. They feel delighted when they see the beauty of nature, when they unfold the beauty of nature. And he was saying that if nature were not beautiful, it would not be worth knowing. What a great aesthetic sense Henry Poincare has. When we are talking about aesthetic sense, we should not forget that effects are the seeds that later produce the knowledge and wisdom when emotions and the impressions of the senses are the fertile soil in which seeds must grow. Russell Carson has said it. So the effects are seeds and emotions and impressions are fertile soil. It means that without emotions and impressions Fact cannot be understood. Fact cannot produce knowledge without emotion, without impression of the senses. This was the idea of Russell Carson. He further added that once the emotions have been aroused, a sense of the beautiful 
and excitement of the new and the unknown a feeling of sympathy pity admiration or love then the knowledge about the subject has lasting meaning so he was basically emphasizing on arousal of senses emotions excitement and feelings without which knowledge cannot be generated and if generated it will has no meaning so what kind of great aesthetic sense these people have and these people are advocating he further added that the winds the sea the moving tides are what they are and if there is wonder in beauty and majesty in them science will discover these qualities and if they are not there science cannot create them so science never creates beauty science imagines about beauty science explore about beauty science feel about beauty science tell you how beautiful it is and the world is so what is expected from you as a science teacher sirali again in his paper identified that a teacher should engage students in a way that heightens the appropriation of the harmonious order of the part of the world you only need to bring them into the contact with nature with the enormity of life and the universe and the nature herself will teach them is the best way possible so shirali is of the opinion that when we are talking about the aesthetics and sense of wonder in the teaching of science it is the responsibility of the teacher to bring our students our learners in the closeness of the nature let them explore nature let them feel nature nature will teach them so what a teacher should develop a teacher should develop appreciation of the beauty and economy of good descriptions a teacher should develop appreciation of predictive power and the power of unifying principles a teacher should develop the pleasure of finding unexpected connections and the pleasure of seeing the simplicity that results from good translation of knowledge dear friends dear teachers when we are talking about aesthetics and science it is everywhere you may search aesthetics and physics chemistry biology life sciences every subject every discipline in science is full of aesthetics and that's why it is said that there is a poetry in science and every child should have a taste of it by delving into the mysteries of nature and explaining them in terms of simpler phenomena we spoil the poetry of all. so as sirelli has said in his paper we all should try to give the opportunity to our students to feel the poetry in science to learn the science to feel the science to explore the science to beauty of the science beauty of the nature and with it we will be able to develop aesthetic sense in our learners thank you very much